I legitimately can't tell if my husband is in the fog or if I am insane. Tell your husband he and his parents can kiss your ass and that he needs to go live with them if he's going to keep acting like that. Honestly fuck him. This is the moment, if you are at all slightly Christian, to whip out the, he to to cleave into you and no other, and basically translates to your family comes first and then his, and your, parents come a far second. You are not insane. What the heck is wrong with him? There's this really great book you guys should read together that will make a lot of these things clear to him and guide you guys in discussing them. It's called, The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work, by John Gottman. It kicks took ass. Your husband is in the wrong and should be standing up for you on this. Especially with times they way they are now. That being said however, you need to stop caving in and doing things you don't want to do. It is your baby and your family. He cannot force you to go to his parents' place. If you do not want to go for whatever reason, then you also need to stand up for yourself and the baby and say no. The parents can come visit if they truly want to see the baby. The back stairs are no excuse she can manage with help if needed I am sure. What the hell else do they want from me? Absolute and total control. Your husband's been her victim his whole life and he doesn't know how to shut her down. He needs therapy. Couples counseling will help your situation as well. The biggest no right now is your husband. Before the boundaries talk that is needed, he needs to apologize for dragging you there when your family member was dying, died. And then not leaving. That was cruel. He ignored your feelings. Has he done other things like this before? Sorry but you need to have a serious talk to your husband and also if he doesn't stick up for you, you need to do it yourself if you're the bad guy oh well. They'll be perfectly fine and tell them you can do Zoom meetings or something for now on but you refuse to go there any longer and that his father isn't telling you what to do. I don't think your husband is in the fog, I think he's a complete asshole too. Making you drive there against your beggings while you are waiting for that kind of news is supper controlling. Why didn't you just say no, I'm not going. You need to stand up to him. What is he going to do, tie you up and make you go? I'm sure he couldn't handle the baby himself either so it's really all under your control if you want it to be. You're not insane, and honestly with a baby I wouldn't be visiting anyone. Your son is also a high risk group being so young. You're not keeping your son from them, but keeping everyone safe during a pandemic and you have been more than accommodating already. Your husband needs to prioritize you and your son over his parents' demands. What in the world? No. Your husband needs to stand up for you and the baby. Especially with you being back at work. The visits to them stop. They are welcome to do outdoor visits at your house, which should be easy for them to fit into their schedules since they don't work. If he's not willing to stand up for his child he can go back to his mom until he figures out his priorities. I feel like you have the answer on your husband, so I just wanted to throw out some advice. Write a list of all the reasons you don't want to go. Put it physically down. Everything from the medical issues, to the pandemic, to the stress it brings you and the baby. It's easier to look at a list when people are applying pressure and gaslighting. Flatly, and without remorse, tell your husband you are not going next time. You are making the best decision for your infant because you are a parent now. Tell him he is welcome to join you in putting your child first, or he may continue being a doormat to his mother, but you and baby will not participate. And then just don't go put your phone on silent, block MIL's number as a mom of two, and one being born just before the pandemic, you have to put your foot down. You have to be firm. All ability to reason has been thrown out by them and you need to meet their selfish expectations with a hard-ass attitude. Just don't go. Don't pack up the baby. Don't get in the car. Don't go. Your husband will freak out because he has been groomed to do whatever necessary to avoid his mom's anger. Understand this is deep-seated. But also understand that you are mom now and you have to answer for your son's safety. Your father-in-law's commands and behavior is concerning I would call police quite frankly. You will come here and you will come inside? That is shocking. Please do not allow anyone to speak to you that way. Surely you wouldn't do that to someone so please do not accept that. 
your husband has to get over what the fuck his parents feel and start doing what is right for his wife and child. They can demand whatever they want, it doesn't make it your problem. It's theirs. I'd be flat out refusing to get in the car again and keeping baby with me. He wants to go that's his problem but I can't believe that he manipulated you into going as your grandmother was dying. That says a lot, and none of it good, about the man you married emo. Put your foot down today. Like, really put it down. Not try to. Put. It. Down. No more visits. You're not insane but what was insane was going to visit his parents a week after you gave birth. What is insane is the power and control those people have over your lives. Your Phil threatened you. He is not safe to be around. Refuse to go. Even without the pandemic all of this is insane. You do have a choice to go or not go wherever you want or don't want. Parents and in-laws do not get to dictate your life when you're independent adults. You have a husband problem. He needs to be an independent man, a husband and father. Not mommy and daddy's obedient little boy. He needs therapy to get out of the fog and put you and his child first. I was thinking couples therapy would also be good. Just so husband can learn how to communicate and listen to op, and vice versa. He says he recognizes the issue, so that's a start, but he needs therapy with her, maybe not much, so they can learn to trust each other more. This would be on top of therapy by himself, too, it sounds like he needs learn how to stick up for himself and his family, and how to negotiate his parents likely turning their nastiness on him, guilting, manipulating him, and trying to alienate him from op. This is really one of those leave and cleave things that's uber important in a marriage. Your parents are still family, but you're no longer beholden to them, your only priorities are your spouse and dependents. If your spouse is physically or emotionally fragile, like having a bad pregnancy, having a newborn, and all of those hormones and changes, hearing about a loved one dying, grieving, etc. etc., you help them heal. You don't put your parents' desires above your spouse's or child's health, ever. It's something I'm still learning personally, but I really think you have to have it addressed plainly and understand the concept of these priorities very directly. Hopefully OP's husband will come around quickly, it might be a start even just reading some of the comments here. The trips to see them stop now until he proves he can stand up for you. He can prove it by being the one to explain to them how their treatment and expectations of you have been unacceptable. Then he can tell them there will be no more visits until his wife receives a sincere apology. How far away are your parents? Do you have a good relationship with them? If so, go stay for a week or so. Without your husband, if you don't have a relationship with them go to a B and b for a week. Don't tell husband where you are but let him know you are okay and just taking a break, re-evaluating your relationship. Think things through. Let husband know that if he can't stand with you he will be moving back to his parents without you. Your husband is being a spineless donkey. This is your baby and you and the husband are not a united front. The weekly visits when you don't want to? Letting them hold squish when you are uncomfortable with it. Just the overall, demands, that you and your baby need to do everything they want, oh hell nah. Would have lost my shit on dumb husband and in-laws. Your in-laws are mean and controlling and your stupid husband is pandering to their wants but not you. You and baby need to be number one priority. Not his parents. They are grandparents and have privileges that are granted. You are not insane. Good luck and congrats on the squish. I'm so sorry that he drug you out there as your grandmother was dying, and chose to comfort his parents by letting them hold the baby over comforting you, his distressed and sobbing wife who had just lost a loved one. This is a so problem, he's guilt tripping you into going and even if the fog is why it's unforgivable. Your in-laws sound entitled, selfish, and domineering and if they can't get that behavior in check I would absolutely tell your husband he can visit them but you and the baby won't be, at least not until you're done breastfeeding low. Couples counseling, only real answer. OMG, I can't believe you've been going 45 minutes each way every other weekend with a newborn. I'm exhausted just reading that. Your husband needs a talking to. He's forceful with you but a spineless noodle around his parents. You need to put your foot down, this is not okay. You are underreacting. Your husband is endangering your child. And I'm not talking about the obvious pandemic issue. These people are control freaks of the highest order with major narc tendencies. 
Regular contact with someone like that can fuck up a child's mental health. Take your husband for example. It's not responsible to be driving his crying recovering from major medical issues wife and infant on road trips every other week. There's the physical dangers of the road and now the pandemic. Plus the mental load of the stress of travel and being talked down to, pushed around and having to argue with these people. It's a recipe for postpartum depression. His parents have twisted his mind to believe that their wants are more important than the literal safety of his wife and infant child. You can say no to your husband. Let him be upset. Someone needs to protect this child. Someone needs to put this baby's life very life above this old lady's fifis. Husband is two weeks it must be you. I am so sorry you are going through this. It's not fair. It's not your fault. As others have said, no is a complete sentence. I love no and it's not used enough. Just picture it off. D.H. It's time to go to J.N.M.I.L. J.N.F.I.L.'s house. You. No D.H. Shocked face what? You. No D.H. Still shocked face but they are expecting us. You. I know. No. D.H. Confused face but why? You. With that disappointed mom face. Dot you know why? No. D.H. Anxious face but they will be upset you. That sounds like a them problem. No. D.H. Scared face but what do I tell them? You. Figure it out. No. D.H. Absolutely shocked Pikachu face but but but. You. No. Lo and I are going to take a nap now. See you in a couple of hours. D.H. Sad face, mouth opening and closing like a fish while you walk away to take a well-deserved nap with Lo before the next feeding time. The angels start to sing, and you feel satisfaction at the wonderful shine of your spine. It will be amazing. Next scene, D.H. has told them you and Lo won't be coming. They call you on the phone interrupting your amazing nap, but you answer because you didn't check caller ID. You, hello? J.N.M.I.L., I thought we had an agreement you would being Lo today. You, no J.N.F.I.L., stern voice, you will get up and bring Lo. You, calm, relaxed voice, no both of them, dramatic gasp, J-N-F-I-L, stern, shocked voice, I'm telling you to come here you, I'm not a dog, no. J-N-M-I-L, whiny voice, but I want to see low you, no. I have to go lovely to talk to you as always. Both, but 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 you, hang up phone, turn to silent roll over to go back to sleep. The clouds part and the sun shines off that amazing shiny spine you have. People can't argue with no. They can try but after what, why, but, not much else they can say if you are a broken record. It's amazing the power the word no has. Use it off it's amazing. Oh and. When you feel threatened you, and told you that you will be coming inside next week. Literally made me want to bang his head against a wall. And you're so stood there, and let them talk to you this way? No. Fucking. Way. You need to put your foot down. You have to think about your son's well-being. This is a pandemic, and you should be self-isolating as much as possible because of your little one. When next weekend rolls around, do not go to your in-laws. Tell your husband outright that you did not like that they threatened you and you particularly didn't like that he did not stand up for you and your son. Your husband is prio rising his parents over your new family and that needs to stop. Leave for a month with the baby. Husband can fend for himself and go back to sucking on his mother's teat. His parents are awful and treating you like a teenage couple, not married adults with an infant. You need to say no and mean no and that means absolutely no. You cannot be guilted by this, this should not be a compromise. He does not care about your feelings, he cares about his parents. Your in-laws and your husband are obvious problems. You say guilt trip, but let's be honest. He emotionally manipulated you when you had recently given birth so you would do something stressful, painful, and unnecessary. He emotionally manipulated you into traveling when he knew your nana was about to die. He took advantage of your vulnerability for his own gain. And yes he did have something to gain. He didn't want his parents to be angry at him so he actively chose to hurt his wife and child for his own gain. You say he's great and this is his only flaw, but be honest with yourself, are you sure these patterns haven't been revealed elsewhere? Has he deprioritized you and now your child for his own gain or convenience in other subtler ways? Wow. You need to have a come to Jesus meeting with this boy. His spine is a complete noodle. First, you. You are an adult, a mother. Nobody can make you do anything you don't want to. Don't get in the car. 
Don't get baby ready. Just stop. These people don't care about you, your feelings, your health, or your baby's well-being. If they did, they wouldn't bully you and guilt your husband to get their way. Hubs can still go over there every week if he wants. You can't stop him. What you can do is sit him down and calmly explain how it makes you feel when he doesn't stand up for you, how you feel when his parents say nasty things to you, and especially when he disregards your feelings and forces you to go see his parents. It's best if you take some time beforehand and make a list of things that hurt you, that way you don't forget some, and more importantly, you make sure he actually hears you before you move on to the next issue. One thing to always remember about dealing with relatives, if they were complete strangers, or even just acquaintances, would you let them treat you that way? Just because they are related by blood does not give anyone the right to treat you badly. Good luck. This is not a problem that will be solved overnight. It will be a constant struggle for months until he sees the light. Just dig your heels in, stay home for Christmas, 2020 is the best year for new families to start their own traditions. If you don't put your foot down now, this will be your life for the next 20 plus years. Your husband is absolutely failing you right now. Stop these visits immediately. You don't go, baby doesn't go. Tell your husband if he wants to still be married in a year, he will agree to counseling. No visits for the next few months. At all. This is your only baby. How dare he bully you into letting his mother taint this experience for you. You need to learn to say no to him. Put your foot down and stop letting him push you around the way his mother pushes him around. You're not overreacting. Next time your husband plans to go visit his parents, you and baby stay home or just leave the house and go somewhere else, socially distanced and taking precautions. Until his mother and father apologize to you, they don't get any access to the baby or you. Until his backbone goes from eclair to titanium, he isn't a husband. He's a jellyfish worshipping at the altar of his mother and you do not need a jellyfish. You need a husband and your baby needs a father. Your husband is neither of those until he calls his mother and tells her, you and dad owe op an apology for your behavior. Op and the baby will not be visiting until the pandemic is over or until you apologize sincerely and change your behavior. Until he can stand up to his mother, he isn't your husband he's her son and he can't be both her son and your husband. Your baby needs someone to advocate for them and you need your husband to man up and handle his family. If he won't tell them that their behavior is wrong, then it's two card time, counselor or divorce. He gets to pick. While he's deciding, you and the baby go stay somewhere else for a little while. Yes, this sounds extreme, but he needs a wake-up call. His parents are treating you terribly and he won't do anything about it. The only way you're insane is for putting up with all that nonsense. You're an adult mother. Your priority is your baby and yourself. If your husband doesn't get that then he needs professional help. Edit. I have to add that it's never a great idea to travel with or expose a newborn to all the various things you're exposing baby to, pandemic or not. You can say no to these people, including your spineless husband. He's in the fog with them, but you're in the fog with him. You have a personal responsibility to keep your kid home when you're uncomfortable, and if they're older and you're working at a daycare, your exposure rate is higher than average because not only are you exposed to those kids, you're exposed to their parents and to a degree who they are exposed to. Your son needs to set boundaries with his parents, but you also need to set boundaries. They weigh his with his parents is how you are with him. He says he thinks it's because they feel I am keeping the baby from them, but they see him every other week in a pandemic. Gee I wonder why. Is it maybe because he's refusing to stand with you as a united front, so their dog piling all the blame on you? Nah, couldn't be. S honestly, if this has been going on for over three years, he has a noodle for a spine. Keep sticking to your guns, don't let him manipulate you into going to his parents, and if he tries then put him on the couch. ETA, you're not mentioning your family and support network in this. I hope you have one. I hope you have a huge, local support network. With all the comments of leaving, going NC and getting therapy for your so, I don't think one half of them consider the logistics of doing all of that without a local support network and a child, Ren involved. What is happening to you and your baby is not okay, and you need to separate yourself from what is harming you. I hope that your so can see his part and responsibility in this and change for the better. I am so sorry you're going through this. 
I am not trying to fear monger you, but all I can really offer other than long distance empathy is. Please read through my posts. I've been married to Misa for over 18 years and I promise you, unless your DH gets out of the fog, this will not improve. Absolutely a so problem. You're right, he's sort of in the fog. I would put my foot down and say, absolutely no, to visiting his parents. You should never have been doing it in the first place. You need to let him know that it's not just about his parents being awful, he let you down and has basically put you in harm's way. Seriously. One week after giving birth? That is not okay. And continues to not be okay. His parents don't get to dictate your life. His dad telling you that you have to come over next week. My spite engines would be at maximum and I would refuse to go over for months. Stand up for you, and let your husband know that he is harming you, on top of his parents. Come on. Who's more important, them or you? My husband was spineless to his parents also. Thankfully a lot of communication about them has helped our relationship. We have also done Q and a so he knows how to appropriately respond to his parents and the expectation that he will stand up for me. I do remove myself from any situation I don't feel up to par going to. With modern day technology I think that could be incorporated into the relationship with your in-laws like a Zoom video instead of face to face. I try to plan little things on special occasions or have friends come over late in the day to have an excuse. Also, you didn't mention communicating with them via phone in your post but I thought I would share that I do not speak with my in-laws via text or phone because they are known to say worse things about me without my husband there. I'm going to tell you a secret I told my kids once they were grown up and left home. Prepare yourself. The only power your parents have over you is the power you give them. Your parents can't make you do anything. The reason my kids think I have the power to make them do something is because they obey me. They want me to approve of them and they want to make me happy. In return, I am always looking out for them and their best interests and happiness. It's a two-way living, respectful relationship. My kids do what I ask of them to make me happy. However, I would not demand that my kids do anything. They are adults. I have MS and am tired. I forgot to get stuff for cranberry sauce yesterday and I didn't make a pumpkin pie, my favorite, because I was too tired. I called one of my sons to chat. He goes whole hog. We were comparing dinners. It was two in the afternoon. He and his wife thought one of them should drive two hours round trip before fixing their dinner to bring me a pumpkin pie and some cranberry sauce because they were sad I didn't have any. What did I say? You are so kind to think of me, but hell no you're not driving two hours to bring me a pie and cranberry sauce on Thanksgiving. You and your little family have a great day. He is bringing me a pie and cranberry sauce on Saturday when they go to fight night with their friends. That's what a two-way street looks like in a relationship when you're looking out for each other. I got something better than pie and cranberry sauce. I got to know my son and Dill cared enough about my happiness on Thanksgiving Day to drive two hours to bring me a pie. Your in-laws are out of line. Neither your hubby or in-laws can make you do anything. Take back your power. Tell them no. Op I'm sorry, but I want to beat your husband's head in to hopefully knock the screws that came loose back into place. I'm about to be a first-time dad and I'll be damned if my I'd force my wife to go anywhere until she was ready to after a traumatic birth. I've already laid down the law with my family and hers if how it'll go for the first few week and at least a month out. This hits close to home for me and you don't have a husband you have a mama's boy who can't do one of his two jobs which is as a father and husband. He is a son third. Father and husband are tied at one and two spots as priorities. This is absolutely unacceptable he's not sticking up for you or the baby so now you have to don't let them do this to you. You just had a baby and you're feeling all the emotions and pains that come with it as for you baby it's your baby do what is best for the baby not what's best for grown adults. My husband was the same and I finally looked at him and said yes they are family but they are extended family. We are the family you created and chose to be with if you continue to not make us a priority we will leave and you can permanently move back in with that family but I'm over it. You are your baby's biggest advocate sometimes you gotta hurt feelings and just say no. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video. And if you are new, subscribe and click on the bell icon.